of qualitative research method you select, your data collection method will vary, extending from the in-depth interview to the participant observation to the uh, probably maybe the group interview or the focus group discussion. Then we learned regarding how to make a transcript. We also learned how to keep the record of all transcript, how to make that Excel sheet in the uh, transcript also, we learned how to do that. But again, that's a good news that uh, uh, like we uh, were talking to Garima also and that, trans uh, that software transcriptor, it is pretty good. We checked that and uh, it is uh, like uh, it's, it aids to your uh, transcription process. Definitely, you have to intervene in between. Uh, but again, it gives you a very good structure on which you can improve upon. So that's... Uh, regarding the transcription and then coming to the analysis. So in the analysis, we discussed regarding the coding process. And it is very important for all of you to know that coding is not analysis, okay? Coding is, we, uh, they, we have given you enough example and we'll see today also what is coding and what is analysis. So coding is not analysis. Coding is simply you are breaking your data into smaller pieces like smaller bone fragments and we have given this analogy of skeleton and when you assemble those uh, bone pieces it will come up as a skeleton and regarding that uh, analytical memo if your skeleton if you leave the skeleton as, sick, as such how that body will look it will not look beautiful so to look though that body beautiful there should be analytical memos and analytical memos are like mortar or like the flesh muscle and every skin which covers up that skeleton so that is the analytical memo and this uh, was regarding the first cycle then now coming to the uh, then we learned regarding the eclectic coding there is something known as the eclectic coding and we shared the book uh, the book on coding uh, that is the saldana so anyone tried reading that book any one of you? Let me see the chat. Book not shared. Didn't we share the book? Okay, then, then uh, maybe it is our fault, but uh, but you should have reminded that in the group. If, if uh, any error occurred from our side, uh, then you can definitely remind uh, in the main group because uh, we might, uh, maybe we may have forgotten. So I, I am extremely sorry for that. We'll share that book again. I'll, I'm, I'll just write so that we don't forget. And then try to read that book. book shared. Is uh, it shared? Hmm. It is shared, uh, shared Sandeep, side. Preeti, Akanksha and Garima. On it is side. there on the website. It is shared. So you can again go and check it today. If not, then you can give us the feedback tomorrow or maybe you can write in the chat box, okay? Whether you have, uh, you got it or not, maybe. Okay. So try in your leisure time, whenever you are free and if you wish to read that book, please do read that book because that book is, if you, any one of you who wants to, like, uh, what can I say? Wants to do uh, learn coding in a better manner, then you should definitely uh, see that uh, book. So now coming to the eclectic process of coding, I will just share my screen. So that was the uh, coding process. Now coming to the, so today what are we going to discuss? And we learned the QDA minor also. In QDA minor, we saw what are the various options, how to import the document, how to add the document. We did the variable part. We did some hands-on. And then uh, we learned regarding the how to code and how to make a category. So we'll move one step forward from that uh, process on the QDA. And again, we will discuss today the process of eclectic coding again, how this eclectic coding is different from the second cycle coding and the first cycle coding. And then why, uh, what is this second cycle coding? So you might find this eclectic as a repetition, but again to revise because uh, we left uh, in between and then I, again, I have to restart from that point. So I'll again quickly summarize that eclectic coding.
So eclectic, uh, remember we discussed regarding the eclectic coding. So first cycle coding method, what were the first cycle coding method? Yes. Please write in the chat box, what are the various types of coding methods which we learned in the first cycle coding method? All of you, Garima, Kanksha, Preeti, Rajesh. You can write, each one of you can write one coding method, what we learned. So that, uh, that should be there in your mind. What, what are the first cycle coding method? Any name? Descriptive coding. Good. Descriptive coding is usually a noun. And it's a type of basically we did two type of coding. Lumper coding and splitter. Lumper is when you replace a whole section with a few words. Yes, Garima, right? In vivo coding is what? When you take the sentence and the quote of the participant and make it as a quote. And in vivo code, we always put it in, in the uh, that uh, inverted comma, double inverted. Okay. Akanksha is writing attribute coding. Very true. Like name, age, sex, which area, what is the profile? Like in this case, doctor or the various stakeholders. Yes, emotion coding, true. Process coding, yes, whenever something is ending like ing, uh, that is known as the process coding, means something is happening. That is the process coding. Yes, then there is a magnitude coding. We say that he, he is too cute or she is so bad, she is very bad. So all those things when we uh, write like uh, in a magnitude thing, like very too, too much bad, too much good, severe pain, moderate pain. Those sort of things. Yes, Akanksha is also writing versus coding. Very true. Because versus we say that institute versus students. So whenever we try to make the comparison or we try to uh, give the rights of two person, like maybe the government versus the uh, civilians or the civilians versus the army people, student versus teacher, the patient versus doctor. In this case, uh, in doctor shopping, obviously, you will have to apply this versus coding also because it's basically this doctor shopping is like the doctor versus patients or the doctor versus maybe the lab uh, technician. So it can be any two group when you have to compare and contrast, you use this versus coding. Yes, narrative is again, it is a special type of coding which we use in the narrative analysis and it is basically a type of uh, you can say that uh, uh, linguistic or language coding, we say that. So narrative coding is again important uh, versus and then I think emotional, I think you have uh, summed up everything you have written. So that was there. Now coming to the eclectic coding. So what is eclectic coding? Anyone, can anyone summarize what is eclectic coding before I, I, I say? just to check your understanding what you did because see uh, understanding this qualitative is very important it's all about your thinking process which makes a good qualitative research all about thinking thinking and thinking analysis on all those again uh, software they are just an aid to organizing the data that thinking process that software cannot do that you have to do actively so what is eclectic code Yes, anyone? Okay. So Ria is writing transition between first and second cycle coding. What to add, what to drop, what to review, changing up to types of code, splitter to lumper. Yes, so reorganize and reframing. So now what is the difference between the eclectic coding? Okay, I will, I will reserve this question after I discuss the second cycle coding. Because second cycle coding, uh, there might be some confusion regarding this eclectic. So there are three terms. There is a term known as the iteration. There's a term known as the cycle. And there's a term known as the eclectic. So once I'll finish this eclectic and second cycle, I'll ask all of you, what is the difference between the cycle of coding? That means the first cycle and second cycle. What is the eclectic coding? And what do you mean by iteration? What, how this iteration is different from cycle? Are they synonym or are they different? So we'll, we'll discuss all this. So again, Ria and the Akanksha has written that after you have coded the data set, in basically in eclectic coding, you 
classify because initially you give the coding but you don't uh, you're not very much uh, clear like is it a magnitude or a process or a versus so maybe you try to like all of you have written re refine and then again this refining process that is there till second cycle coding also that is not going to end in the at the eclectic coding so basically you tend to again merge like you have written some other name uh, maybe i i have written like uh, uh, refer to the doctor and again in some other mind i have written like doctor referral so these two are the same thing but uh, again this eclectic process i will revisit it maybe and then i will see like can i merge these two together because these two are synonym and then again i'll replace it with some other word so this uh, again uh, this eclectic process is a basically the process linking the second cycle coding and the first cycle coding so basically if you have done with the first cycle coding and then uh, you are, are you planning for the second cycle coding or not so not all of us go for the second cycle coding because second cycle coding is a one step higher than the first cycle coding so in this transition phase what do we do like again you have said you reorganized you reconfigure the codes which you have made in the first cycle so in this case either you can apply new coding methods like initially you have i i said that there are multiple options eight to nine coding methods so again you can try giving the name or using some other type of coding methods which you have not used in the first so that you will be doing in the already existing codes you will just reorganize that code and again you will construct the categories and that will be a very rough category because categories you create in the coding also but the category which you create here, the categories which you create in the second cycle coding, that is entirely different. The process is entirely different. Whatever you are doing here, that is not on the basis of any conceptual theory. It is only on your understanding, your current understanding. And then you just like club each similar looking thing together. And then you draw a preliminary model. And we re read about the uh, code uh, mapping and code landscaping and operational model diagram. And in the writing results section also, we'll see that you should include these things. Like you should include your code map, your code landscaping and operational model diagram, which is one of the session today, how to write a report of a qualitative research or how to write a article if you have to submit an article to a journal. So these are the like code mapping, code landscaping and the operational model diagram. So eclectic coding is a hybrid coding which includes the shades of first cycle coding methods. Like I said, like initially you have used the process coding and in vivo coding. Now, based on a research question because uh, your doctor shopping, you want to switch more to the versus coding. So you will again go and see from a different perspective and you may apply some other coding method, maybe causal coding, which we you have not done initially, but you want to describe the causality because you you want to say as uh, see like which uh, act happened together which led to this doctor shopping so that maybe causality coding you will go for the causality coding because your research question and this uh, directly you cannot refine your code remember it is a process i cannot go and on the first moment i'll do the right coding no it's a process and it takes iteration means two three four iterations to make it a as a perfect so we used to uh, uh, like again uh, two or more first cycle coding method and these choices are purposeful and pre-decided like i said it will depend on your research question or it will depend on your central phenomena so we have explained this with example of an mbba student uh, we interviewed them and we assessed the perception of their course and uh, this is the eclectic so participant gender she was a female which is the attribute code the age was 24 years middle class and the mbbs final year so all these are the attribute coding so uh, coming to this i have just shown i'll quickly go through this because we have discussed all these things in the previous session so here you can see that uh, i have just uh, like uh, written this that i am a 27 year old and i have to pay off and that scares the hell out of me so i have done this scared which is an emotional code i have got to go so in the first this thing i have used this uh, uh define my uh, codes like versus codes emotion codes and then 
again uh, descriptive codes again we learnt about what is a code mapping so code mapping is basically like uh, this is a uh, code mapping so you can see we discussed about the difference between the first and second here we discussed that the words the size of the font that is uh, bigger in uh, as you compare from this because this has come up as a prominent uh, category under the social or the human awareness and then we discussed the operational model diagram like you can arrange the category and subcategory in a diagrammatic way again this operational model diagram it is easier said than done because the human emotion or the psychological domain of human the things are not that simple that you will always have a operational model diagram a tentative one definitely you can suggest but uh, a circular or a linear like what we draw we should we usually draw that but uh, that's just a very very rather than a crude depiction we can say but uh, it's very difficult to put things uh, in a diagrammatic way very accurately so it is just a rough sketch which you you should definitely try with a with a thing in your back of mind uh, that actually human mind or the thinking process or the perception of people towards anything is not that simple which will be drawn in a very simple manner and i have shown you like uh, this example uh, of the operational model diagram you will see it is a linear basically it is not circular because arrows are going linear like effect of school extracurricular activity in adult life and you can see it is again leading to effect on the social life effect on the identity so it is going in a linear manner but again it is not a, like a, i have tried it but it is not very easy to draw a, a operational model diagram but you can definitely try and you should try uh, and uh, again i said that there are software like envivo uh, they form the concept map and mind map and schematic and thematic map but again you have to uh, interpret that and uh, that's a very rough you may need to reorganize it uh, differently so you uh, now i just gave an analogy between the cooking and qualitative data analysis and this analogy i'll discuss today also because that's very important for all of you to understand what is a first cycle coding what is a eclectic and what is a second cycle coding and what is a iteration so i discussed that when you go to a grocery shop and uh, you collect the data so going to a grocery shop is like a data collection then again collecting food items in a shopping cart is like collecting data in your field notes journal or the recorder so you have put everything in the cart that is in the recorder then you make transcript so you, uh, and uh, then if you go to the cashier stands and then get each item barcode that is the first cycle coding method what is what uh, vegetable the other is maybe grocery the other things so that is your first cycle coding method you are just naming the things which you have kept in the cart that is the first cycle coding method then what that person does he categorizes that like he will put all the frozen item in one packet all the fresh item in the other packet maybe all the meats in other packet uh, and if you have bought something else also the other packet so similar thing similar looking item or similarly related thing he will put in one bag so that is like category you are making category then again you bring that uh, so that is up till the first cycle coding so you bring food items so man you think uh, for preparing some delicious in the evening maybe whatever so that is writing what you are thinking so you are thinking of preparing something in this case you are going inductively you have not have, uh, something which you have pre decided so if you have pre decided something it is like you are deductive but if it is uh, not decided uh, previously and once you have bought it and now you are planning to make something uh, initially you must have think of making something sweet that's why you went to the market but what that sweet is because we start with a research question so we cannot say that we don't have anything in our hand so like starting a research question is like thinking about anything you will make sweet but what that item would be that you are not sure so once you have come back you just want to see what you want to cook and then maybe some variant of kheer or some variant of payasam because kheer is already known how it is made so if you want to add something to the existing theory 
it is like some other mix and match dishes you want to make so maybe uh, then you will write about the analytical uh, field memo in writing and then you will open th that those bags and you will keep again in your home at a separate shelf like you will keep all the frozen item in the uh, freezer deep freezer section all the fresh item uh, in the freezer freezer compartment so it is like uh, doing the second cycle coding and then again you will take everything and you will make the dish so that is like uh, writing the manuscript so your final dish is like a write up so we discussed till this point that uh, that was the eclectic process so am i making myself clear because now i will come to the second cycle coding method are you guys clear? Uh, uh, we were just revising. So Ria said uh, yes. Any any other yes? Garima is also said. Akanksha yes. Okay. So three yeses. Hari Priya is also yes. Okay. So now coming to the second cycle coding. And now you, uh, I will just show you a video, and you have to tell me. Uh, the each processes, uh, the analogy, <coughs> analogy of the each processes. What is the first cycle coding? What is the second cycle coding? And uh, the the you know write up. Okay, so so just uh, before I go, I'll just show this video to you. I'll share my sound so that I should not forget because I always forget this. So I'm sharing this before. All of you, please watch this. This is a simple video, nothing, not related to any movie. And, but you have to write in the chat box, which processes is what, okay? So just watch it carefully. I will show it again. If you like, uh, if there is a confusion. We were big enough area to work in on a soft surface in the room you're going to use your furniture. You don't want to be dragging furniture from room to room once it's assembled. Read the instructions before you start, a couple of times if need be. Don't skip ahead. It's all about putting the right part in the right place in the right order. Every step and part will be clearly numbered. Lay all the parts on a carpet or soft surface to minimize scratches. Once you have checked and counted the hardware, it's a good idea to keep all screws and fittings in their packages until you need them. Check against the instructions that you have all the parts you need. If you're missing anything, have another look in the box. It'll probably be hidden in a corner. It'll take from about 15 minutes for smaller jobs to a few hours for larger items. Your instructions will give you a guide time and tell you whether it's a one-person or two-person job. Cam bolts are easy to fit, but need to be aligned correctly. Make sure the arrow on the bolt points in the direction of the pin before pressing into the hole, so it slides over the pin easily. Carefully turn the bolt half a turn so the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction to lock the bolt in place. Draw runners come in two very similar shapes, marked and your unit is perfectly square. Now that your unit is nearly finished and freestanding, it's time to fit the doors. You can make any adjustments by turning the adjustment screws on the hinges. We hope you so now again so starting from beginning so initially what you saw let me go back you're a big enough area to work in on a soft surface in the room you're going to use your furniture you don't want to be dragging furniture from room to room once it's assembled read the instructions before you start So uh, can you hear me now? So opening packet and reading the manual, yes. So opening packet and the packet uh, which was kept, what was there in the packet? Yes, all of you please write in the chat box. What was there in the packet? What all things were there? Or if you can recall anything which you have ordered from Amazon and you have to uh, like do it on your own. So opening and arranging the tools. So remember, when the person has opened the packet, there was small packets. There was a packet of screw. There was a packet of the all the uh, fixers. And then, then there are, there's a big uh, 
cardboard or the wooden uh, shelves okay so that whole uh, packet think it uh, like a like a transcript okay that packet which you have not opened that is like a transcript then imagine those screws already in this case it is already made but those small screw or those wrenches or maybe the wood that you have made from that transcript okay so you have made the initial codes and then all those codes when you have kept it together like all screws together all uh, the small fixers together all woods together maybe all the nut and bolt together there were three four five packets whenever you open there there are two three packets so these two three packets are like the codes which are similarly coded thing which are like category so those small packets are like categories okay now what that person did so that up till that uh, category this is the first cycle code so up till first cycle code have you understood this analogy of this uh, opening and uh, screw and wood and this thing in every other uh, packet okay this is the first cycle code and the category now this just imagine the second cycle code second cycle code is like the uh, in this case the instructions were there already but in your case that analogy is missing in this because you will not have any instructions your brain and the analytical memo are the sort of instructions which you have to apply because after you have applied that then you have to think in this case it was easy that you will fix this with that and then you will assemble and that then there, there will be cupboard or the table will be ready but in your case you have to fix the individual pieces together and that instructions it is not a written instructions you have to go by your mind or your by your brain or by your thinking process how those individual pieces should be clubbed together to make a new item maybe in this case it was a uh, alm uh, cupboard and maybe similarly that's why we said that uh, from a similar first cycle code you can make another uh, something else some other and the other person can do some other thinking process so it is entirely the thinking process uh, which will be different between two people and again we discussed regarding the solo coding regarding the uh, two persons coding together regarding the group coding the advantages and disadvantages of those coding methods uh, so this was uh, the second cycle coding so basically second cycle is coding like you know many time we play a game you know with the small kids where the individual pieces are there and you like uh, club those pieces to make a giraffe a small kids you will see that puzzle game uh, is there or uh, the remember that lego lego is a very famous uh, where there are small pieces and with the same small pieces uh, a one child can make a train the other child make a what maybe a bus uh, have you have you ever played with that lego small pieces anyone in this group who has a small kid or maybe the, when he was small and if i'm correct that's the lego na lego only na that small pieces akanksha is writing yes okay maybe those of you who has got a, a small kid at their home or maybe uh, their childhood i don't remember uh, whether it was available at that time or not but uh, that small that there are so many pieces in that lego this thing and you will see that the kids they will make something new many times which the instructions booklet has not uh, uh, depicted they they make something new and which looks very beautiful many a times you cannot name it many times it is looking something like some other structure but uh, something goes uh, something is going on in their mind of the kids and they make something some very beautiful thing out of that small pieces so those small pieces are like your codes the first cycle codes 
and when you make something you assemble these together and you make something so that is your uh, the outcome after the second cycle code okay did you understand the difference between the first cycle coding and the second cycle coding up till now whatever we have discussed so garima is writing yes so many times what uh, the researcher they do like uh, beginners uh, maybe we also till now we have only restricted up till now till the second uh, till the first cycle coding and we categorize and we make a theme and then we we just uh, represent our data we have not gone into the second cycle but again we are planning to now go into the second cycle coding because second cycle coding is a one step advanced so uh, what i what we advise that you first do like one or two qualitative research with the first cycle coding and categorizing and theming them and describing them <coughs> uh, once you are uh, very much comfortable because this second cycle coding needs a good interview also so once you are very comfortable with the first cycle coding methods and the whole process of this uh, qualitative research then you should go to the second cycle coding methods so now uh, again uh, to summarize this qualitative data analysis you have to uh, start with the first cycle coding and we discuss the different first cycle coding uh, was the descriptive in vivo emotional magnitude process protocol which has been written here i have not told you the protocol coding but it is also there and then after the first cycle coding you categorize and you organize and categorize those codes and then you go to the second cycle code in the second cycle code again we discussed regarding the in the last session also regarding a mnemonic fact which we use in the grounded theory and there's a pattern code so this focused coding f stands for focused coding a stands for excel coding and t stands for theoretical coding so all these pattern focus uh, excel and theoretical coding that is a methods of the second cycle coding method and after the second cycle coding method then you look for some pre existing theory maybe during the second cycle coding also you can uh, look for a pre existing theory because as a medical professional we are not aware about the theories which are there in the other fields so then you may look up all those human behavior or the sociological maybe the psychological theories and then you can try fitting your uh, data into that theory or maybe add something existing um, either you can add something to that theory or it is rarely that uh, you make a new uh, theory then uh, again uh, uh, a very important question do i need to do a second cycle coding yes what will be the answer Garima is writing yes. Any no other yeses? Actually, again, it depends uh, on the uh, intensity of your research and the intensity of researcher also. So I said that uh, once you are, it's like you know, taking out the paper from your own thesis. the second cycle coding many time you will see na that students they are very reluctant to take out the paper from their own thesis they don't like to read their own thesis and make tables similarly the second cycle coding is something like that once you are done with coding and categorizing many times you don't feel like sitting with your own data and you will say okay that's okay i have done enough but again it depends on your research question and how you are your again we discussed about that axiology how much uh, as a researcher you have that ethical this thing in your mind that no i have to do this research and i have to come up with a theory so it all depends on your strength mental strength the perseverance Remember, we discussed the qualities of a qualitative researcher that he should be a critical thinker a logical thinker and perseverance that should be there because if you don't have perseverance you will stop after first cycle coding you will not go beyond that and then the other things we discussed regarding the uh, you know he should be be very good in um, all that uh, dictionary this thing language vocabulary he should be honest uh, and 
uh, flexible because the second that uh, first cycle coding and the eclectic process that needs a lot of flexibility you have decided something on the first attempt but it may happen that you will drop altogether all the, those codes which you have thought initially that those codes are very important so you need to be flexible you don't uh, you you should not be rigid no 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 i have thought of these as a very important but maybe later you will found that that is not coming in line with your uh, research question so you might uh, have to drop and many times we we always say that we make so many codes but there are many codes which we don't use uh, if you make approximately 100 codes i am sure that 15 to 20 codes it will not fit into any category and then you will drop those codes basically you will not tell about that so uh, this is uh, not always uh, it depends on the your perseverance your research question your thinking process do you want to go to the second cycle coding or you want to stop at the first cycle coding so after first cycle coding method you have got two options in your hand uh, either you can uh, do the iteration you refine your code you do the eclectic coding probably and you publish the result most of the thing you will see that uh, they involve a first cycle coding and eclectic process where they refine uh, and then ju they just present the themes. Those themes are even not related to each other. Those things will be separate. Those themes are entirely separate. We'll show you. But in the second cycle coding, you try to link those unrelated themes together. So that needs a lot of thinking process. So again, in the second cycle coding, you recode the data using the second cycle coding method. Now coming to what is the second cycle coding method. So this is an advanced way of reorganizing and reanalyzing data coded through the first cycle coding methods. So when will you use the second cycle coding method? So when your project involves constructing. So when you have a belief in grounded theory or when you Remember, we discussed about the various qualitative research method. We discussed about the narrative research, the phenomenology, the case study, the grounded theory. So those we have discussed. So if you are maybe the ethnography. So if your uh, choice of qualitative research involves a grounded theory, then definitely you have to go for the second cycle coding method. Many times people... Uh, write in their uh, lit, uh, article that it's a grounded theory. In the phase one, you all have reviewed the articles only on the section of methodology, not uh, for all the uh, parts. You have only reviewed the methodology. So that methodology, you have also written that they have written it as a grounded theory. And again, a grounded theory. Remember in the initial uh, first phase, we discussed like, there may be that the data collection is like a grounded, but the analysis is not like a grounded. So many times it is not very hardcore uh, research method. Rather, you will find a shade of it, like a qualitative descriptive with a shade of grounded, maybe a phenomenology with a shade of uh, grounded. So those things maybe you will find in the usual uh, presentation of the qualitative research finding it is not very hard and fast and many times you will see that uh, the pe the uh, the uh, author is writing that uh, a particular type but actually when you see it and when you appraise it you will find that uh, it is not that uh, those uh, things are not described so when you pr project your project involves further addition so already there is a previous research work and you want to add on that that then you will uh, do this uh, second cycle coding method and when your project involves exploring longitudinal changes, what do we mean by longitudinal changes? That you want to uh, like see the changes over a, a period of time. So if you are going and uh, uh, like uh, interviewing them maybe more than one time, then again you can come up with a second cycle coding method. So the primary goal of a second cycle coding method is to develop a sense of categorical, thematic, conceptual or a theoretical reorganization from a first cycle codes. Now, how to do that? So by uh, recoding codes. So we have recoded the codes during the first cycle coding method. And uh, you have got that. Again, what you do here, you will recode those codes 
which you have developed from the first cycle coding method. So yes, can someone read this uh, for me? Maybe five staff members of a surgical team. Anyone from the participant? Maybe I can ask Manisha. Manisha, can you do this if you are here now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Five staff members of a surgical team unit interviewed separately about the unit chief's leadership style. Each one remarked how internal communication from the unit chief were occasionally haphazard, incomplete, or non-existent. Each passage below was initially descriptive coded or in vivo coded. Note that if one sentence is bold because during coding, it struck the researcher as a strong statement. So I'll show you. Thank you, Manisha. So it is just that uh, initially those pieces of uh, excerpts or verbatim was coded using the en vivo code or the descriptive code. But later the researcher again applied the second cycle coding method. So I have only taken this example. I have taken again from that uh, book uh, Coding Manual by Saldana. And uh, they have used, he has used this as an example of showing the uh, pattern coding. So this is the example of pattern coding, which I am showing. So now, uh, yes, can you start again, Manisha? Yes, ma'am. Uh, nurse, I often have to go back to him and get more information about what he wants done because his first set of instructions weren't clear. So it so is unclear. Maybe, uh, yes, true. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. So this uh, you can see here that uh, the nurse is, uh, so I've only taken that part which I want to show as a pattern coding. So here uh, the code was unclear instructions. That was the, uh, maybe the descriptive code which was uh, formed initially, yes. So now coming to the second. Reception, reception is. It's kind of hard working for his because he rushes in, tells you what he needs, what needs to be done and goes into his office. After he's gone, you start doing the job and then you find out there's all these other things he didn't think of to tell you. And uh, this is the rushed direction that S is missed here. Okay, so it's by mistake. R-U-H-E-D. Please uh, read it as rushed. R-U-S-H-E-D. So the okay. first sentence, it is like it's a kind of hard working for his because he rushes in. So rushes in means whenever he is telling something, he is always in a hurry. So that descriptive code is the rushed direction probably. And then again, the receptionist is saying that after he is gone, you start doing the job and then you find out that there are many things which he did not uh, think to tell you. So again, this was an incomplete direction. Direction which he gave, it was not complete and there were many things which got missed. Then Manisha, district OT assistant. OT assistant says, sometimes I think he expects you to read his mind and know what he wants or that he expects you to know everything that's going on without his having to tell you. I can't do my job effectively if he doesn't communicate with me. Yes. So in this case, we have just uh, the situation, we have uh, converted it into a medical scenario. If you will read the Saldana, they have given it in the context of a uh, corporate sector, but we have just changed it to the uh, surgical team probably. That's why you will see that OT assistant and maybe receptionist. So here the OT assistant uh, is saying, that uh, sometime he thinks that uh, that uh, the administrator he expects uh, to read his mind so expectations the code which has been made was the expectations of info and then he expects you to know everything that is going on without his having to tell you and this is leading to uh, like then he that person is saying i cannot uh, do my job effectively so that is leading to the dissatisfaction in the employee also and he has written that if he doesn't communicate with me so he doesn't communicate with me what is the type of code here what is the type of code all of you please write in the chat box
expectations of info is a which type it's a descriptive yes akanksha is right so whenever you will see this as a double comma in this uh, it is a type of in vivo code and you can see here that he has written he has said this he doesn't communicate with me so this uh, is the he doesn't communicate so now you will see the another the junior doctor what the junior doctor is saying about and this is all about the communication the central phenomena was like uh, the uh, problem in the communication manisha again i have to say it to you thank you okay in advance junior doctor i hate it when he tells me in the hallway or or in a conversation what to do i need it written in an email so there is documentation of the transaction of for the operations manager and the auditor yes so junior doctor is again uh, saying it that uh, many times he talks with me in the hallway and then uh, he need it in a written way so that uh, uh, there is a documentation and uh, many times that is there as a proof so he uh, uh, the descriptive code which is here it is the written direction needed trainee student sometimes he doesn't always tell me what he needs and then he gets upset later when it hasn't been done well that's because you never told me to do it in the first place again so this is which type of call you never told me to do to do this so you never told me again a type of in vivo code yes so now i have again all those codes seven codes those similar codes i have assembled it together and in this case this is a type of pattern coding so when you are writing the analytical memo remember we discussed about the analytical memo what is analytical memo analytical memo are very 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 important if you don't write an analytical memo while doing the coding process it will lead to a not so good manuscript or not so good i cannot say bad but not so good manuscript so do write and it's a matter of practice initially the first qualitative uh, this thing which i coded i i did not write any uh, memo so that uh, it was not that good but again uh, with uh, one or two more this thing i i practiced of writing that because initially you will find that you know doing everything together uh, that jumbling is there in our mind so you have to come up uh, come out of that uh, status go slow but write analytical memo so when you are doing the code so in this case uh, when you are doing the memoing also and remember memoing what we discuss you have to write memo date wise you have to you should put the date also because then you will see the your memo also gets refined as you move ahead uh, with the analysis process so you have to see the commonality so when you are doing it again in the second cycle coding you have got that code but again you will see the commonality of that code so those seven types of code which you see here that's a mix of descriptive and the in vivo code like unclear instructions rushed directions incomplete directions expectations of info he doesn't communicate written directions needed you never told me and again if i have to replace all these seven codes with one uh, code then option there are three options first option is he doesn't communicate maybe i have used an vivo second is the miscommunication miscommunication in this case the author has just put a satire the metaphoric so miss is here maybe if the leader is a uh, a lady maybe then you can write like miss communication or something miss miss communication so it's a type of metaphorical code metaphor we we did not discuss the metaphoric code but that metaphoric code is used uh, mostly in the language coding which we discussed remember that roar uh, we discussed that song of roar and that uh, a metaphor there were many metaphors which was used so metaphor coding is uh, commonly used uh, in the literature and uh, maybe uh, those uh, drama and the play uh, but again you can use it in the health also and uh, then dysfunctional uh, the option third option is the dysfunctional direction so you can see that you can remove all these uh, seven codes with either of these three options 
uh, he doesn't communicate maybe maybe somebody can write ineffective communication like we dis we read communication like effective and ineffective so maybe what initially i thought i wrote it as a ineffective communication so this is again a pattern so you are trying to see a pattern in these quotes and you have replaced all these seven with one so the most uh, these are the type of uh, uh, one uh, type of code that is the pattern code the other most commonly used second cycle coding methods are the focused coding axial coding theoretical coding and elaborative coding i am not going into the detail of that in the first in the phase 2 we discussed a little bit about the focused coding axial coding and theoretical coding and we also say that we use this in the grounded theory uh, so again focused coding is when you try uh, to make the similarly code uh, similar looking category together axial coding you try to make a relationship and it's like you try to identify one axis and then in the theoretical coding that predominant axis is your theory that's a theoretical coding so it is always said like spine if you if you uh, i have given an analogy of the uh, individual bone pieces to the code and then uh, the flesh and maybe the muscle and uh, fat everything together as a or the motor as a as a memo and that spine if you uh, the spine or the main backbone that is our central uh, category and that is your theory so if you can come if you it is not necessary that you will always again i said this is not uh, it's easier said than done i am again saying it but uh, it's very difficult to come up with a theory it needs a lot of thinking process and uh, we we are not tuned into those type of thinking into the psychological domain and human behavior but again this doctor shopping is entirely a human behavior so i think that some theoretical background you have to do you must uh, do a second cycle coding in this and uh, i am sure that definitely some some theory will come up uh, with this such type of behavior why like uh, the people behave uh, in this uh, context doctor shopping because it is only uh, uh, it is related to the behavior so that uh, spine that central category uh, will come uh, definitely should come but again if it is not coming no problem don't give a wrong uh, theory it's better to give no theory rather than to prove something deliberately or by force so don't do if it, the data is leading to some theory then it is okay otherwise uh, it should not be uh, forcefully done uh, you can just come up with a pattern coding also not necessary that you will always use a, a grounded theory uh, methods so pattern coding it is a commonly used coding method in the second cycle if uh, the uh, our aim is to use any other design except grounded theory and for grounded theory we use the focused axial and theoretical coding for any other coding like if you are doing the phenomenology or the interpretive uh, phenomenological analysis uh, then uh, the pattern uh, is sufficient it's one of the very commonly used second cycle coding method like you have just seen with the example of that miscommunication so that's with the second cycle coding method so it's one hour so as i from the this existing project so uh, after that we have created variables so in the project section you can see there are options here new open reopen then again notes somebody asked in the last class if you want to write notes then you can click this and you can write about the project here under the section of notes then again in the cases if you have to under this option of cases you can add case or you can append case so if you yes so if you click on this uh, add new case so it will ask for the variable before this variable you can see we have created variable 
using this option of add variable. So if you click on the option of add variable, then you have added all those variables like gender, age, profession. Again, there's a lag, I guess. So cases, these add or append cases, you add cases here and then coming to the variables using a spreadsheet editor, you can create a spreadsheet here or you can import a spreadsheet, uh, copy paste the Excel because uh, if you have got a spreadsheet in the Excel sheet, you can again copy paste it here. So these were the options uh, we have seen. And then we saw how to code uh, Excel. Anyone who has started, uh, who did the coding, I think few of them have shared their coding now. Anybody who, who has done this exercise, maybe on their own data? Anybody? Okay, no answer. It's okay. So you can start with this open code. Uh, here I have written open code, but again, we discussed that if you start coding a particular sentence, like if I have to discuss, I spend uh, 15 minutes each patient. This, so you select these sentence and you go to this create new code. So if you press on this green uh, plus icon, it will give a new code. And this code comes like that. If you want to edit a code, so like if you want to edit this work experience, you can right click this code and you can click this edit code option. Under this code, there is a name of the code. There is a category. And then there's a color. So like name of the code is work experience and the category, you can write any category, but maybe I have just not given any category. So I've just written it as an open code and I have clicked it. Okay. Then I have, again, these are, these were all the codes because I have gone inductively. May I have shown you a few making the categories like the refusal, maybe suggestions of HIV patients, which we did uh, in the last session. And then I also told you regarding how to write the analytical memo. So if you click on a particular code and if you right click, you can see there are various options like add code, edit code, delete code. And you can see there's a something known as the retrieve segment. So if you click this, then you can see there is a, uh, uh, who has said this, this will come to you. I'm sharing my private ex uh, experience here. And I see approximately five to six patients in this hospital. So this text will come here. And if you have written any comment also, so like maybe you can see this, I'll show you with this work experience. So like this was the work experience this code. So if you go to this code and if you retrieve segment, you can see here that comments will also appear. This one. This is the comment. So analytical memo which you write in the comment section that appears here. And you can also write in the comment section when you are making a category what has led you to make that category or even that uh, here in this section because you will have to write in the description why you have coded or why you have put all these uh, codes together in one category so if you like click this uh, maybe this refusal if i right click this and if i just add this edit code you can see there is a description so you can write the description of this uh, category and why you are coding uh, these uh, here. 
and again you can say you can do that uh, uh, while uh, doing a analytical memo also in this case uh, one analytical memo i have written and how do i write if i have to write i'll click this and i'll press on this comment and if you press on this comment then i can uh, there is a various color uh, this is for the to keep this is for for the discuss this purple is to need review and then it is like warning maybe i go with this simple one that is the reflection what was my reflection so i can write uh, here what was the so if you see that uh, i'm sharing my private practice appearance uh, experience here so then i may write that uh, uh, there's a doctor gives a i probably have written in the previous one doctor gives good quality time to the patient so that that's the analytical memo and if you have written a memo it will appear here as a uh, yellow band like you see in the upper one can you see here so this is how we write now coming to one step ahead what are the various options here and how do we use it so maybe i'll go to the third uh, uh, this thing on stage uh, there is a stage 3 because i have made a category of all the so now coming to many times you will see that uh, category and theme many people write these category as a theme and uh, you must have read that thematic analysis so what is a thematic analysis basically so whenever you are trying to come up with a theme and now what is a theme how do you decide that whether you will call that uh, as a theme so any disturbance in your data any uh, participants sorrow their uh, their you know emotional code uh that uh, is mainly the theme that should be the theme that's how you identify what is a theme but many times you will see that categories also the author they write it as a theme the categories so like he, in this case uh, you can see i have coded uh, i have made category like there is a category of treatment strategy then there is a category of testing strategy then communication then there is a category of barriers in the treatment and care of hiv patients then you can see here there is a refusal this you can see there is a refusal also there is a direct refusal and then there is a indirect refusal can you see it so this is there there is a lags between like my saying and it is showing and uh, then coming down you can see like ways to tackle refusal so i have made these many categories now if i want to now i have now uh, decided that i will use these category and i i have to write the uh, report or maybe i have to write the result how to do that so in writing the result you can see there are the two options retrieve and analyze so if you come to analyze option you can see there is something known as the coding frequency so if you click this this to पहले से बहुत लाग आ रहा है हम्म ओके सो डिड यू सी हाउ डिड आई डू दैट आई हैव क्लिक्ड ऑन दिस एनालाइज आर यू पीपल क्लियर अप टिल दिस दिस कैटेगरीज एंड द कोड हाउ वी हैव डन दिस एनी रिस्पांस फ्रॉम योर साइड Okay, Ria has written yes. 
Any other yeses? Garima, Akanksha. Okay. Thank you. So now you can see there are two options. Retrieve and analyze. If you click on this analyze, you can see there is an option in the free version. Only one option is there. That is the coding frequency. What you can do, you can click on this help and you can click on this hide full version menu. Because if you click on this hide full version menu, only those menu which, which is uh, there in the free version that will be shown to you and it will not create unnecessary confusion. So you can click this hide full version menu items and only those three items that will be shown to you. So you can go to this analyze and click on coding frequency. When you have clicked on coding frequency and then click on this search. So I will just maximize this window so you can see that these codes with their coding frequency are there. Like treatment strategy and their code, how many times it has appeared. And then you can come down and you can see here, like mandatory testing three and two. Again, these mandatory testing, you can see here that I have written mandatory testing four, five times. Mandatory testing before undergoing for surgery, practice universally, these all things you can club together as a form of a mandatory testing. So that is again iteration. So like if you're, I have written while doing that, maybe I have done some in vivo coding and I have written this mandatory testing four times. So you can again club all these four together in the form of a mandatory testing code it will reduce the number of code. That is the purpose of iteration. So that you can see, and again, you can see the count and the percentage of code here. So this uh, table, this is a huge one. Maybe if you've got less number of codes <coughs> and category or the important co category, which you think, because you will see that there are many codes which will not fit into any category. So any code which is not fit, fitting into any category, this we, we leave it as such. Because in this case, you can see these are the open codes, maybe, uh, which is which has not uh, which is not fitting into any category. So we have not used this, but the themes or the category which you are going to use as a part of manuscript, you can show it uh, in the form of a table. And this frequency of code, this is known as the content analysis. So you can, in the depiction of result, you once you have finalized, obviously this is a very raw stage uh, currently. But if you do more iteration, if you refine your codes, then you will have a refined codes. And those codes, you can give a table because we will discuss that in the report writing and in the manuscript. Because most of the time, if you see the qualitative research journals, they have got a word limit of probably five, six, seven thousand. And qualitative uh, write-up is very, very long actually because it's mostly the words and the verbatims which you have to use. So, uh, and the number of tables also you can give, like you can give three, four, five number of tables. So if you give many things in the tables, uh, then you can uh, uh, gain words uh, in the write-up. So this uh, table, obviously, uh, after refining the codes, uh, if the number of codes are like 30, 40 or something like that, you can give that frequency, code frequency as a table. And this is known as the content analysis. When you are just uh, doing the uh, frequency thing, it is more like a quantitative, like how many times that particular phrase has appeared. Uh, then this is a type of content analysis. We'll discuss that too. So. This is uh, 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 how, how we have got uh, this. Like you go to this again. Uh, I will minimize this. You can close this. So how we have gone, analyze, coding frequency. This window will appear. You can see in the drop down. There are uh, other this thing, but it is only document. So it will uh, search for the codes in the all documents. 
click on the search and this will come. Now, if you want to retrieve the segment, so there are two options. Do you want to retrieve the segment, all the segments, or do you want to retrieve the segment of a particular category? So what you can do, you, you can see here, like ways to tackle discrimination if or the uh, direct or indirect referral, you can see here, refusal and referral. So if I right click this, then you can see there is an option of retrieve segment. So you can click on this retrieve segment. And if you press this, this sections will, uh, will be enlarged. There is a small this one. There's a small uh, icon here, and this will uh, enlarge the whole uh, view and the verbatim, which we are not able to see now. So if you click this, and if you maximize this, so you can see here that. Uh, it gives you the category. So these are the category, indirect or the direct. This gives you the code. This gives you the case, who said this. And then this is the text or the verbatim. And then you can come to this right click and you can see the comments. So comments are also there. The surgeon here, analytical memo, which you have written. It gives you the frequency also. And then you can like uh, save it as an Excel because I have started writing this refusal. So maybe I, I have write, uh, I've started writing refusal. So I need this document as a reference of my write-up. So what I'll do, here you can see there is a button. There's a icon here, this one, a very small. And in click, this is the created, create coded segment report. So you click this. This gives you the report. So it gives you the all uh, case and it's the verbatim. Again, there is an option of like saving this in the form of a Excel file. So you can see that save the of this uh, document. In this case, you can see there are save as a various types. So you save it as a Excel. Maybe I, I will just, uh, by for demonstration, I will save it in the desktop and I will write here as the coded segment. And I have saved this. So you can, do you want to open the file? Yes. So if I click on this, yes, you can see there's a, uh, Excel file has opened. So this is the Excel file where you have got uh, and then you can uh, you can save a separate Excel file for each of your category. Like you can again add a sheet here and you can keep on after you have uh, made the categories and the, you have themed the data, uh, you have written the analytical memo in that comment section, all the analytical memo will be here. So again, you use this reference Excel sheet in writing up the uh, findings that we'll discuss. I'll show you when, how to write that and what format. So you must have gone through a lot of qualitative research articles and you see that they start uh, their finding uh, with the setup and then they give the quote and then ultimately they conclude with something. So you will use this and then you can open a, a Microsoft Word document and simultaneously you can write your finding or your result using this reference document uh, and in this case, case, we'll discuss what quote to choose. Can we use all quotes or we should be using only very significant number of quotes or quotes? So that is up to you, depending on the report. If you have to make a detailed report, 
you can use uh, a large number of quotes. If you have to submit the article in the journal, definitely because there is a restriction of the word count. So you have to take care of that. That which are the very significant quotes which are related to your central uh, question. A quote which is appearing uh, many times, like in the content, this content analysis or code frequency, you will see that which is the code which is appearing many times. So you can take that quote, maybe those significant quote in your write-up section or any quote which is uh, very different or very uh, unique, you can say, which has hit you or which strikes you or which has touched you while taking the interview or while reading. So anything which has touched you, which has disturbed you maybe by reading that you're, you are like feeling like why this thing is happening or why such thing is happening. So any quote which disturbs you, which strikes you or which, which, which touches you, you should use those quotes. And again, uh, simultaneously, because you have written the analytical memo also. So that it is when, if you have written the analytical memo very nicely, uh, the only thing remaining is the arranging those things in the MS Word document. Otherwise, most of the work you've already done it. Then you have to refine a language and maybe a little bit of polish is needed. But otherwise, the overall skeleton you have prepared and now just have to uh, do the fine uh, work. Okay. So this is regarding one category. Similarly, you can again, if I go back there, here, and if I close this, so any other category or you can simultaneously, you can have all the categories together. So for, for that, I will, what I'll do, I'll go here, uh, retrieve. In retrieve, I'll go the text retrieval. And then there is a coding retrieval. So under this text retrieval, this is, uh, this is the first I'll show you the coding retrieval. So if you have written this coding re retrieval, again, you press this search. Okay, maybe I have selected one code. That's why it is only coming like this. Let me see. Okay. okay. So I'll go here. Coding retrieval. Okay, so maybe a specific code is uh, written here. That's why it is taking this. Assuring the patient surgery will be done. It has already taken something must be ticked here. That's why it is giving you only that particular. Yes, so you can see. All that was ticked. That's why it is only giving those segments. So I have un unclick, untick this. But that search thing again, I will, from here you can uh, select. So either you can select all, and again, if you can search here, then it will give you the code of related to this. Why this whole thing is not coming? Coding. No, but this again, once I do this, this uh, search thing is not coming here. If you like do the whole document. No, if you remember, let me do it. I. Let me open it again. I'll go to this. Use free edition. So coding retrieval. So uh, yes, we have to select the codes here. So you can either you can select from here or you can directly right click this. 
then also you will get it like retrieve the segment again or uh, after this coding frequency once you have clicked this and then also here you can see the coding frequency so the text retrieval will be like each category wise similarly like barriers if you want uh, you can click You can see here and then you can Is my voice okay now? Okay. So uh, the uh, particular, uh, if you want to retrieve the segment and comments of a particular category, you can right click and then you can show that retrieve segment. If you want all uh, at one in one view, then again, if you click on this coding frequency, you click on this search. So you have got all the coding frequency in options here, this one. Again, there's a lag because I cannot see. Can my, today's uh, connectivity has got a lot of issue. Can you see now? Yes. So this is the coding frequency and this you can see that uh, there's an option here. You can again check this and if I click this, then you can select that. If I select this, you can again tick it from here, click and then again right click this. And you can write that uh, retrieve segment and again you can see the retrieve segment here. Again you can save the retrieve segment or you can create segment report use both these two frequency retrieve the coding retrieval now you can see something as a text retrieval so if you click this text retrieval when this option is used so like in this case if i have to search the text maybe i i i want to see the refusal so maybe my theme the pattern coding is the refusal and referral so maybe what i'll write refusal or refer so who has referred so i'll type here as refer and then I am looking it in the whole paragraph. Search unit is the paragraph. And then search. So you can see here that it will give you all the uh, 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 like uh, hits in where the this refer word has appeared. But uh, it will tell you all the refer whether the uh, responder is saying or the interviewer is saying. It does not... Uh, take into account like it will give you all the refer where it has been used. So when we can use this, so again you can use this as a part of the coding. So if this has come, so what uh, you can code uh, uh, all these together. I'll just show you retrieve, text retrieval, refer, search, and in search, if you want to make a new code, maybe. So all these refer, 
you want to make a, a code of referral and then you make okay so then you can see there is an appearance of a code in the referral this thing just a second and then if you code all these hits together all these 20 hits together then it will be coded yes then all these will be coded in the form of referral so if uh, this option we use to see whether uh, if you are like looking for a, a key a word a what you can say just to see. let me see yes so this you can see there's a, a referral and if you if i right click this and if i see the retrieve segment So now uh, you can one go, you can code, uh, give all these excerpts, but these are only as a part of the iteration process not as that thing these, these options are clear to all of you like how to make a excel sheet of that particular category and make individual excel sheets so that you can get a report and what is the coding frequency how to retrieve the segment from the coding frequency no clear voice 